nobody is born as an intelligence officer. They are made. Um, but with regard to the Abwehr, this process of transforming regular offices into intelligence or profession, professionals has not been researched yet. Seen from today, this transformation uh, largely took place in a kind of black box. Its details are largely unknown. Um, my focus today is on foreign intelligence, the realm of the Abwehr Depart Abwehr's Department 1, uh, the Geheime Meldedienst. Um, after the dissolution of the, of the Abwehr in 1944, it had been taken over by the military office, uh, the Militärisches Amt. This had been established as a separate department of Office 6, Amt 6 of the Reichssicherheitshauptmann, Hauptamt, the SS Foreign uh, Intelligence Service, headed by Walter Schellenberg. Um, we see here uh, the Abwehrabteilung 1. It um, was transferred to Amt 6. Um, and I will talk today about the implementation of the training of offices in this area in, in 1944 and 1945. The establishment of an intelligence school for foreign intelligence in 1944 is inseparably linked with the dissolution of the Abwehr. But it is important to keep in mind that most of the Abwehr personnel had not been dismissed, but was transferred to the new organization. Um, the SS had considered the takeover as a merger of both services. This process had not come to an end in May 1945. It is noticeable that the training of intelligence officers was established at a time when there was an increasing shortage of offices, but vacancies uh, were not filled up with offices at hand, taken, for example, from dissolved up their units or offices, um, but with personnel taken from other units. Um, it is striking that there was an influx of younger offices and offices with general staff training into the former up there in 1944 even if there was were only a, if even if there was only a handful of general staff offices uh, with a military office in 1944 uh, there were still more than in 1939 with the old up there um, in the next step i will sketch briefly the training of up there offices before 1944 when the businessman Nikolaus Ritter in early 1937 began his work at the Abwehrstelle Hamburg, he had, as he wrote in his memoirs, no previous knowledge of intelligence and had received no training at all. Ritter's experience is typical for most of the Abwehr offices of all departments. Only fragmentary information is available on the establishment of training courses for Abwehr offices between 1919 and 1944. Um, however, while Abwehr schools uh, can be found with Abwehr Departments 2, that's sabotage and insurrection, and 3, counter espionage, in which at least some of the new officers were trained, there is no such evidence regarding foreign intelligence. I'm talking about um, standardized schools, uh, long term institutions, and as I said, um, regarding foreign intelligence, I have found no traces. Um, it is important to keep in mind that other intelligence services, such as the Foreign Armies East, did not begin established training courses before 1943 either. Um, now, between spring and autumn 1944, training facilities for foreign intelligence and sabotage were set up. Preparations began in spring of 1944. This is the time when the Abwehr was actually dissolved. An Arbeitskreis to discuss the curriculum of the intelligence school was set up in May 1944. The first six week course was held in November and December 1944 with around 20 to 40 participants. The course was divided into the three subjects ideology, 6% of the total time, foreign studies, 4%, and intelligence, 90% of the time. Uh, 
Of these courses, only the curricula have survived and only the titles of the lectures are known. Here, for example, uh, the chapters on um, um, training agents, using agents, communicating with agents. Um, there were other lectures on foreign armies and foreign intelligence services. Um, and there, of course, were um, exercises we see here, um, uh, Einsatzaufgabe Ostfront, um, um, the, um, the build up of a network of uh, retreat uh, during a, a retreat. Um, the training included further one small arms training, unarmed combat and pilot shooting. Several field trips were planned um, to a prisoner of war camp, an agent's training camp, an intelligence outpost, a concentration camp, and a trial of the Volksgerichtshof. Um, regrettably, uh, nothing is known here in detail. Uh, how to teach topics which is secret and neither standardized or written down. Um, there were no manuals on stock, no A to Z of intelligence or intelligence for dummies on the shelf. The creation of teaching materials, materials is particularly interesting because of the need to put the trade, trade craft on record. The only major document known to me is a handbook on intelligence written in the summer of 1944. Here, Handbuch des Meldedienstes, uh, book one uh, from Meldewesen. But this handbook is more a lengthy letter of intent on how the new intelligence service should be organized and led. Among others, the handbook includes several rather indirect re references to the SS. Uh, for example, that the intelligence officers' wives were as well members of the order of the intelligence officers, uh, Mitglieder im Orden der Meldeoffiziere. And um, like the Knights of the Holy Grail, the intelligence officers have the most distinguished mission to protect the most precious, the national, social, no, national, social, national socialist ideology. Um, between autumn 1944 and the end of the war, around 250 participants graduated from the intelligence school. Only little is known about them. They were rather young frontline officers. Uh, most of them were decorated, that's important. Most of them held the rank of lieutenant or second lieutenant. Um, and as far as it is known, they had not served with intelligence before. Um, there's no time to discuss this at the moment. Um, it would be highly interesting to understand why they had entered intelligence and how they assessed the courses. But at the moment, uh, they, have no, they have left no traces um, that might be questioned. Um, from early 1945 on, SD offices were included to these courses. Um, as far as I know, the Waffen-SS uh, transferred only very, very few officers to these courses. They were very reluctant. Um, but the crucial point is that an institutionalized, systematic, and long-term long training re regime had been set up at all. So coming to an end, um, the first que question that has to be answered is why it took so long to set, set up a foreign intelligence school. There are no reasons mentioned explicitly in the sources, so I can only speculate. Uh, the Wehrmacht has, had established a system of schools and courses to train specialized officers. The general tendency was to replace the officer type of the all-rounders by specialists. But there are no sources giving any information why no foreign intelligence school had been established before 1944. One reason was certainly the perception of intelligence by the top of the Wehrmacht. And intelligence had no um, high status at all there. And there certainly was also ignorance at the top of the Abwehr regarding any systematic planning of personnel issues. Uh, this does not only regard um, training, but personal issues in general. 
Um, for, third, for a long time, intelligence activities had been considered as a kind of black art that had been passed on from a teacher to a student. And fourth, Heinrich Himmler was in 1944 clearly more, more motivated than Wilhelm Keitel to rejuvenate uh, the Foreign Intelligence Officers Corps. Himmler turned out to be a far better auto advocate for intelligence than Keitel. So um, Schellenberg and Himmler thus were the unlikely midwives of intelligence training in the military. Um, the recruitment of train and training of younger officers has certainly to be regarded as an instrument to control the intelligence service. But to me, the prime motivation was indeed uh, to improve intelligence. Fifth, it is completely open how important secrecy was. These each issues are not mentioned in the sources at all. The sources also do not mention if any higher level training institutions of the Wehrmacht were involved. Um, any discussion of the implementation of intelligence training must above all emphasize its programmatic character. The process of merging uh, military and political intelligence had not been completed at the end of the war. Uh, the establishment of an intelligence school is to be seen clearly as a step towards a professionalization of military uh, foreign intelligence to create the profession of a military intelligence officer. Um, foreign intelligence within the military office still was a military intelligence service. I think that should be underlined. Uh, staffed with military personnel, it reported to military author authorities and it reported on military affairs. Um, the separation of military and political intelligence had been retained. Um, political intelligence remained with Office 6, the um, Auslandsnachrichtendienst of the SD. And if we look here, um, if there had been something like a hybridization or civilization of uh, military intelligence in 1944, then this only concerned the group um, um, six economy uh, in which parts of office six and the former up there had been merged. But um, it's important to see here, um, these parts of milita military intelligence, which are the less military part because working on economy and technology, uh, they are taken out from military um, intelligence and transferred to the SD. Um, nevertheless, uh, the intelligence service, which had been formed in 1944, uh, had little in common with the Abwehr of 1933. The introduction of formal training of intelligence officers is part of this metamorphosis. Um, in 1944, 1945, Office 6 even planned to establish an intelligence academy for the post-war period, a step that had been unthinkable to me uh, in 1939. That's it. Thank you.